Uh, Minister, I mean, what is the progress that you've been able to make with this uh, ambition uh, to get into the uh, discussion, as it were, around uh, developments in, in Mars? Uh, good morning. Uh, first off, we started off with our endeavor towards space exploration with a uh, primary objective of developing capabilities here and spurring us towards uh, being players in design and development of advanced technologies. And the Emirates Mars mission is an anchor project by which we're able to spur the development there. The spacecraft was launched on July 20th of this year. Uh, it's currently on its journey towards Mars. It's more than two thirds of the way there. We're expected to arrive in Mars on the 9th of February next year. Uh, the spacecraft has been operating better than expected. Uh, we are currently uh, done with all major maneuver maneuvers and all major checks prior to arrival of Mars. Uh, towards the end of this year, we will start uh, the, the toughest part of our journey, and that's preparing the spacecraft for um, entry into orbit around Mars uh, and becoming global player when it comes to um, scientific advancements and scientific development uh, for the, for, the uh, for planetary exploration with a focus on Mars. But more importantly, it provides us now with a spurring moment on taking those capabilities and advancing a private sector um, it focused on space within the Emirates. Minister, good morning to you. It's Manus alongside Yusuf. You talk about uh, becoming a player uh, and attracting talent and investment in this area to the UAE. How will we benchmark that success, Minister? Will it be uh, X number of scientists? Will it be X amount of dollars coming here in terms of technology investment? How will we assess whether we are becoming a player, as you say? The next five years will be instrumental towards the development of a space sector within the Emirates. And that focuses on truly enabling across different sectors. So a private sector that's able to design and develop and produce and eventually export space systems and more importantly, space technologies and subsystems uh, to the wider uh, world. Um, and then an, another focus on advancing research across universities. And the, met, the metrics that we have in place to be able to gauge ourselves against it is the increase of scientists within universities because they spur uh, the development of the space sector. But more importantly, it's increasing the value of the space sector within the UAE's economy. If the advancements are going according to, to plan, the target is to add by 2025 4 billion dirhams um, into the economy coming out of a private space sector. And that can increase throughout mm -hmm. the next few years, uh, moving towards establishing a very solid um, presence within the region. Uh, Minister, how hard has it been to convince some of these leading scientists to come and join the space program here in the United Arab Emirates? It's a very limited pool of talent. It's very, very competitive. Does that mean that you had to pay more? Well, it was more about the science. So when we endeavored on designing and developing the Emirates Mars mission, the overall approach was one of the means of attraction for international collaboration. Uh, the desi design timeline was slashed from uh, 10 years to be focused on six years. The complexity was, uh, was reduced. Uh, um, and then the budget for planetary exploration was more than halved with this mission. More importantly, we're able to um, collect new scientific data about Mars and, and be able to tackle an area of science that hasn't been tackled uh, by other missions. It's this collaborative approach that then becomes an attraction for first collaboration. And this is what the Emirates Mars mission was all about. The next step, once you start producing data and analyzing the results and releasing the data to the public to be utilized by scientists around the world without an embargo period, that spurs, uh, spurs attraction with regards to further collaboration. Space, more than any other sector, is a highly collaborative one. And it's mostly driven in terms of um, gain towards science and gain towards exploration and gain towards uh, the design and development of new technologies that meet the objectives at a lower cost. Minister, you, you said that you're ahead of target and, and schedule, but one of the areas of interest that, that many people, when we said we were going to interview, they said it's around the data on hydrogen that you may be gathering. And I suppose to that extent, um, what have you, you gathered on hydrogen and, and what do you hope to do with that information? You say it's about galvanizing people's use of the data. What can you tell us? 
Once we get to Mars, we'll be um, studying comprehensively the weather system on the planet. The weather system is important to give us a better understanding of the climate change that happened in that planet that sort of resembles ours in, in terms of makeup. And one at one point in its history had water on its surface. Uh, what we are looking to compare is what role does the weather system play in the loss of hydrogen and oxygen, which are the building blocks in, of, uh, of uh, uh, water. Now, before we arrived there, and because we were able to complete a lot of the maneuvers that were scheduled ahead of time, we are also now able to capture the hydrogen that exists within the inner solar system. So we're now uh, able to collect throughout the next uh, months prior to arrival to Mars, um, data sets of the hydrogen buildup within, uh, within our solar system. We have a maneuver scheduled with another spacecraft, Bepi Colombo, which, which has been launched by ESA, um, to be able to also measure that the, those uh, um, observations. And we will also take a snapshot of the extension mm -hmm. of hydrogen very far out from, from, uh, from Mars. So these are new observations yeah. and new data that will be available to the uh, wider science community. So the plan is then to send the rover to the moon by 2024. Could you give us a, a little bit of context as to how much capital will need to be deployed into that? What is the cost of this program? The cost of the Emirates Mars mission was $200 million um, in terms of development, and the approach of development had reduced um, the spending. A similar mission costs upward of $600 million uh, in development. The same approach is being taken across the space sector within the Emirates, um, and an approach in, in re-looking how you design and develop such spacecrafts from a new angle and a new perspective, especially that we are a new entrant into space. What we've managed to do is take on experiences from around the world on designing and developing such complex systems and bring forward a new angle with regards to how to design and develop them to be smaller, um, to be less complex, and that then reduces the cost. The same thing is happening in, in um, Earth observation satellites, making them smaller and making them more accessible. And that's where the new space economy is coming up to be, reducing com complexity in space systems, making them more accessible to the wider world, and being able to launch them at a lower and lower cost. And that's the area that the UAE is capitalizing on to, uh, to enter into the space sector.